Good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. I am Lloyd Vendel Kabakungan, and due to unforeseen circumstances, I will be delivering the sermon on behalf of my father on the exact obedience in building the tabernacle. As we continue with our sermon series this morning, we come to study the importance of Israelites' contribution to the tabernacle. Taking off from last week's sermon, we recall that living in the presence and way of the Lord is very important. We were reminded that we can be with the Lord every day, every morning, that we can reach out to the Lord in prayer, praise Him, and worship Him at every moment of our lives. This is so we accepted Him as our personal Lord and Savior. We can now directly approach Him and commune with the Lord. And in his closing statement, Elder Joe Anko emphasized that the presence of Yahweh and walking in the way of Yahweh cannot be separated. Let's start from there. As the Israelites were preparing to build the tabernacle, God gave them three significant commands. And these three commands are exact commands that the Israelites need to follow while constructing the tabernacle. Notably, these three commands are not just true during the time of Moses, but of eternal value to all Christians, even up to these days. And my father likened the order of building the temple to participating in building his kingdom here on earth. Hence, I encourage you to reflect on how you can also participate in building God's kingdom in this place. The mission that he has entrusted us to accomplish in this modern day world. And before we proceed, shall we pause for a moment of prayer? Let us pray. Uh, Lord, thank you for this wonderful day and there's opportunity, Lord, that I could share uh, Daddy's sermon, Lord, to the congregation and to the church, Lord. Pray for the Holy Spirit to be with us, Lord, as we um, discuss, Lord, your word on how we could actively participate in building the Perdachel here in this modern day world. Lord, use me and thank you for using Daddy, Lord, as your mouthpiece to deliver your message. And pray for confidence, Lord, and for anointing. In Jesus' name, Amen. May I encourage everyone to open your Bibles in Exodus chapter 35 and let us read verses 1 through 3. Let us read. Then Moses assembled all the congregation of the sons of Israel and said to them, These are the things that the Lord has commanded you to do. For six days work may be done, but on the seventh day you shall have a holy day. A Sabbath of complete rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. You shall not kindle a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. As Christians, we are commanded to observe a Sabbath rest. In Hebrew scriptures, the word Sabbath has two meanings. One is Shabbat, which means to cease or stop working, while the other is Nuwak, which means to dwell. In both cases, the significance is to rest. In the first meaning, we are told to cease work, cease from our ordinary tasks in order to meet with God and take a time to worship Him. Note that the interplay of the meanings of Sabbath here. The Lord wanted us to take a rest physically and at the same time commune with Him. How many of us doesn't want to take a break during work period or take a leave? In the military, there is a practice that after working for several months, or being deployed for several months in the field, you are allowed to take an R&R, which means rest and recreation. This is a much needed activity to allow ourselves to relax and stress by spending time and quality time with our family and friends. I remember some of our members, lalo na yung mga kapatid natin OFW or seamen, after working for several months, they come home and spend time with their family. I asked one brother, do you receive a salary while at home? And he said, no. Imagine not receiving a salary for one or two months. Well, he might have earned a lot for the family's needs while he is not at work. But who knows when they need a big amount for an emergency expense. And he told me, that's where faith comes in. When we take a rest, working for a living, we also entrust everything to God, our businesses, our activities, our lives, making Him in control of everything, and this is what we call an act of faith. 
In other words, we relinquish all that we have, all that we do, and allow God to dwell in us and manifest His power, His grace, His purposes, and His glory in our lives. Alam niyo po, masarap sa pakiramdam pag meron kang Kristo sa buhay. You have a precious friend to trust na yung tipong hindi kanya pababayaan kahit maging sino ka man. Sabi po sa isang hymn, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take Him at His word Just to rest upon His promise And to know the saith the Lord Sabi po sa refrain, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him How I proved Him all and all Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus Oh, for grace to trust Him more. Sabi po sa second verse, Yes, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, Just from sin itself to cease, Just from Jesus simply taking Life and rest and joy and peace. Sabi po sa verse 3, I'm so glad I learned to trust Thee, Precious Jesus, Savior and Friend, And I know that Thou art with me, Wilt be with me to the end. The command of taking a Sabbath is a repeated commandment in Exodus 35. I think we first heard of this command during the message of Elder Chito. And why did the Israelites have to observe the Sabbath? One of the reasons is they observed it from God. Also, they were observing the Sabbath because they were following the law, and in their perspective, the Messiah is yet to come. This Messiah was just still a promise, and the coming of such Messiah will fulfill the law. However, today, we all know that the Messiah has come. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, came to us as we sang, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. No more let sins and sorrow grow, no thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found. Far, far, the curse is found. And at last, He rules the world with truth and grace, And make the nations prove the glories of His righteousness, And wonders of His love, And wonders of His love, And wonders, wonders of His love. Yes, there is joy when we take a Sabbath, When we dwell with the Lord, when we receive the Lord, and when we let the Lord come into our lives. But we can only experience such joy when we truly rest on the Lord, truly believe and receive Christ as our Lord and Savior. Sabi nga po dun sa kanta, Let every heart prepare Him room. So beloved, have you prepared a room for Jesus in your heart? In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus declares that He is the Lord of the Sabbath. So if you have not yet received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, why don't you receive Him now so you will experience a perfect rest? Sabi nga po sa kanta, He comes to make His blessings flow for us the curse is found. And sabi nga po sa Isaiah 1.18, Come now, says the Lord, though your skins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Let the Lord wash all your sins and let His blessings flow in your life. Let Him rule your life, your world, with truth and grace. And see the wonders of His love. And with that, we prove to all the nations that the glories of His righteousness and the wonders of His love. The wonders of His love. And to close this portion, may you read Hebrews chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. A Sabbath rest for the people of God. Therefore, since the promise of entering His rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. 
for we also have had the good news proclaimed to us, just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them, because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Now, we who have believed enter that rest, just as God has said, So I declare on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. On the seventh day, God rested from all his works. And again in the passage above, he says, They shall never enter my rest. Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience, God again set a certain day, calling it today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. We are to completely live and rest our lives with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us now go to our point number two. We are called to offer to the Lord. The second command that God commanded Moses for Israelites to perform was to offer to the Lord. Let me emphasize that the command did not come from Moses, but from God. In fact, this is a reiteration of his command found in chapters 25 to 31. Let us continue reading verses 49. Let us read. Moses spoke to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded, saying, Take from among you a contribution to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart is to bring it as the Lord's contribution. Gold, silver, and bronze, and violet, purple, and scarlet material, fine linen, goat's hair, and ram skin dyed red, and fine leather, and acacia wood, and oil for lighting, and spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones, and setting stones for the ephod, and for the breast piece. Note on the nature of the offering or contribution. It must be given with a willing heart, a free will offering. The contributions have to be offered completely on one's own free will, just as they have decided in their own hearts. This idea was presented during the Old Testament times, but this same idea is presented in the New Testament. In 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7, it says, each one must do just as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. A story has been told about a Baptist preacher named Dr. George Truett, who accepted an invitation from a church to preach during the dedication of their new church building. He arrived at the church about 10 minutes before the service started and was told that the church needed to raise $6,500 or equivalent to 325,000 pesos by the next day in order to finish paying for the building. And the church officers told him that they were depending on him to raise that money. In other words, they are depending on that pastor's preaching ability to encourage the congregation. That they would be encouraged to offer probably a little bit bigger amount of money in order to raise funds and fully pay for the church building. Dr. Truett preached a sermon, then said, These men bid me to tell you that you must give 6,500 or 325,000 pesos in cash, which is all due tomorrow. Will you provide it? And after Dr. Truett's appeal began his lowest, most reluctant, most Christ-shaming offering he had ever witnessed. And after 30 minutes, they had around $3,000, not even half of what they needed. And Dr. Truett said, what do you expect of me? I'm your guest. I do not happen to have the other $3,500. What do you expect of me? Then a little woman rose and addressed her husband, who was at the front of the church, recording what was given. 
With sadness in her voice, she said, Charlie, I have wondered if you would be willing for us to give our little cottage just paid out of debt. You were offered $3,500 in cash for it yesterday. We were told we could get it at the bank anytime in 10 days if you chose to make the trade. Or in other words, Charlie, I have wondered if you would be willing for us to give our little house to Christ, that his house may be free. When we remember, Charlie, that Christ gave his life for us, I wonder if we ought not to give this little house to him. And Charlie responded in the same spirit, Jenny, dear, I was thinking of the same thing. You will give the $3,500. Silence reigned for a minute, and then grown men began sobbing. And almost in a moment, that $3,500 was given by men and women who for the last half hour had either refused to give or had given grudgingly. Imagine, you are in that church, and that church is called Green Hills Christian Fellowship Batangas. Saan po kayo sa congregation? Kayo po ba yung katulad ng mag-asawa na handang magbigay ng kanilang best offering? Maging ang kanilang pinakamamahal na kubo para sa Panginoon? Or kayo yung nasa church pero sulakuyan, nag-iisip pa rin kung ano ang i-offer niyo sa Panginoon? Sabi nga po sa verse 5, Take from among you a contribution to the Lord, whoever is of a willing heart. Wise giving has to be a free will. And not mandatory. In the first place, God does not need anything because He owns everything. Remember? He made a lot of miracles. When Mary asked Jesus for help after the wedding ran out of wine, Jesus turned the water in large jars into wine. When there is a need to feed a great crowd of around 5,000 men, Jesus made five small barley loaves of bread and two small fishes to feed them. He even gathered 12 baskets of excess food after the feeding. So why is there a need for God to command His people to offer? Well, God is giving us the opportunity to give, the opportunity to serve Him, to worship Him. He has chosen to allow us to include us in the building of His kingdom here on earth. Note that the Israelites were not only commanded to offer their gold or money. They offer anything that they have in their possession to build the tabernacle. Again, with a willing heart. They gave gold, silver, and bronze, and violet, purple, and scarlet material, fine linen, goat's hair, ram skin dyed in red, and fine leather and acacia wood, and oil for lighting, and spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones, and setting stones for the ephod, and for the breast piece. Similarly, the of Batangas don't just need money as a form of offering. God also needs your time, your talents, or at most, you, you of service to the Lord. And when Daddy was in the academy, he learned the song which goes, We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you, we are an offering. Lord, use our voices, Lord, use our hands, Lord, use our lives, they are yours. We are an offering, and all that we have, and all that we are, all that we hope to be, we give to you, we give to you. And later, when Don Moen became more popular, I learned his song, Lord, I offer my life to you, everything I through. Use it for your glory, Lord. I offer my days to you, lifting my praise to you as a pleasing sacrifice. Lord, I offer you my life. And may this be your prayer of your heart, my brothers and sisters. I pray that may the message of these songs resonate in your heart and lead you to offer your life in serving Him. And this leads me to my last point. We are called to serve the Lord. Exodus chapter 35, verse 10 to 20. Let us read these verses. Verse 10. Have every skillful person among you come and make all that the Lord has commanded, the tabernacle, its tent, 
its covering, its hooks, and its boards, its bars, its pillars, and its bases, the arc and its poles, the toning cover, and the covering curtain, the table and its poles, and all its utensils and the bread of the presence, the lampstand also for the light, and its utensils and its lamps, and the oil for the light, and the altar of incense and its poles, and the anointing oil, and the fragrant incense, and the curtain for the doorway at the entrance of the tabernacle. The altar of burnt offering with its bronze grating, its poles, and all its utensils, the basin and its stand, the hangings of the courtyard, its pillars and its bases, and the curtain for the gate of the courtyard, the pegs of the tabernacle and the pegs of the courtyard, and their ropes, the woven garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments of, for Aaron, the priest, and the garments of his sons to serve as priests. The Israelites served in various capacities and worked in various jobs in building the tabernacle. They gave themselves their time and participated in the work. Note that the money we drop at the offering box or send to our online banks will not accomplish the task. We need to participate in the work. Have you heard of a story about a father who has been busy with his business? He goes for business, travels here and there. He meets with clients and been very busy all days, seven days a week. And you know what? Yes, by doing so, he earns a lot of money. And usually, he comes home late at night and immediately goes to bed. Uh, but in doing so, he misses the graduation of his son, misses his birthday of his daughter, and failed to spend time with his wife during their anniversary. And so to make up for it, he gives his son a new bike, her daughter a new iPhone, and his wife a new LV bag or Hermes. Now tell me, is he a good father? Similarly, God does not only need the money we drop in the offering box. We need to serve Him. And serving in the Church of God requires different tasks and different skills. Our text explicitly emphasizes the different skills needed, like carpentry for the woodwork of the table and poles, sewing, embroidery, dyeing for the clothes and curtains, candle making for the candles for the lampstand and others. Likewise, whatever skills you have, you can contribute or help in various ways. Remember, we are gifted with different skills according to God's grace given to us. In Romans 12 verses 6 to 8 it says, However, since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to use them properly. So if prophecy in proportion to one's faith, if service in the act of serving, or the one who teaches in the act of teaching, or the one who exhorts in the work of exhortation, the one who gives with generosity, the one who is in leadership with diligence, and the one who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Teaching and exhortation, leadership, and many more. Our church needs volunteer workers for the same skills. I recall our announcement that we are in need of new gen volunteer teachers and probably even Sunday school teachers. Few weeks from now, we will also elect our church leaders who will help our pastors in various ministries. And today, we will be honoring our church volunteers who have unselfishly dedicated their time for the work of God. One key message that we learn from Israelites is that they serve with a willing heart. Will you do the same now? So, if you want, you can come, sign up, serve our church. Sign up in a ministry you are called to serve. Every one of us is gifted and the Lord is just waiting for you to be used by Him. So final thoughts. In verses 20 to 29 we read, Then all the congregation of the sons of Israel departed from Moses' presence. And everyone whose heart stirred him and everyone whose spirit moved him came and brought the Lord's contribution for the work, the tent of meeting, and for all its service. And for the holy garments, then all whose hearts moved them, both men and women, came and brought brooches and earrings and signet rings and bracelets, all articles of gold. So did everyone who presented an offering of gold to the Lord. Everyone who was in a possession of violet, purple, or scarlet material, or fine linen, 
her goat's hair or ram skin dyed red or fine leather brought them. Everyone who could make a contribution of silver and bronze brought the Lord's contribution. And everyone who was in possession of acacia wood for any work of the service brought it. And all the skilled women spun with their hands and brought what they had spun in violet, purple, and scarlet material, and in fine linen. And all the women whose hearts stirred with a skill spun the goat's hair. The rulers, moreover, brought onyx stones, and the stones for setting on the ephod and for the breast piece, and the spice and the oil for the light, for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense. The Israelites, all the men and women, whose heart moved them to bring material for all the work which the Lord had commanded through Moses to be done, brought a voluntary offering to the Lord. Now notice po ba natin yung mga highlighted words? My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, lahat sila involved. That's why I invite you to call up your family members, your friends, at tayo lahat ay sama-sama ng magsilbi para sa Panginoon. I would love to see one family serving in the church in various capacities. Sa praise and worship, sa CMC or communications media, sa tech, sa admin, sa pagtuturo sa Sunday school and growth groups, at marami pang iba. Sumahan natin ang ating mga pastor sa pagpapalaganap ng salita ng ating Diyos. Ngayon, bukas, and until He calls us home, we are called to worship. We are called to offer. And we are called to serve. And this is the exact obedience that the Lord wanted us to do in order to build His tabernacle here on earth. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this wonderful time. And thank you for the story that was delivered this morning, Lord. Thank you for the lives of the Israelites, Lord. And may we exemplify their example, Lord, on how they were able to do things, Lord, for you. To offer everything that they have, Lord, for you. And to use their gifts and talents, Lord, for you. Touch our hearts. And if we naging resamin, Lord, to worship you, Lord, our talents, Lord, and the gifts that you have given us. I pray that you would soften our hearts, Lord, and may you use us mightily for your ministry and for the expansion of your kingdom. This we ask in Jesus' name.